This afternoon, after 10 months in court, the 14 defendants arrived to hear the verdicts, escorted by heavy security. It was the conclusion of the largest trial in modern French history, after one of the worst terror attacks in peacetime Europe. On the evening of the 13th of November 2015, nine gunmen and suicide bombers launched coordinated attacks within minutes of each other at the Bataclan Concert Hall, the Stade de France, and crowded restaurants across Paris. 130 people were killed and hundreds were injured. In the hours that followed, European intelligence agencies worked closely together to find accomplices to this terror network and the one surviving attacker, Salah Abdeslam. Abdeslam went on the run and a continental manhunt was launched. He was identified in this CCTV with another suspect who had connections to the attacks, Mohamed Abrini. This was filmed just days before the Paris attacks. It was believed Abdeslam had moved around Paris with the attackers that night with the intention of using his own suicide vest. He didn't detonate it though. Instead, he dumped the vest in a bin and escaped Paris. Months later, he was arrested in Belgium in the same district where he'd grown up and been radicalised. At the start of the trial, Abdeslam was unrepentant. When asked, he gave his profession as Islamic State fighter. But in recent weeks, he's changed his tone, even pleading for clemency, saying that the reason he did not explode his suicide vest was because he wanted to save lives. But the police disagree with that. They say that when they found it, it was defective. And that is the only reason he didn't blow himself up. Arthur Denevour survived the attack on the Bataclan and like the police and prosecution, doubts Abdeslam's recent statements. He feels very apologetic, but I think he's apologetic towards himself. Uh, he's mad at himself for getting into that and either going into that or not going the whole way and getting in that middle ground where he'll be in jail for probably the rest of his life. Abdeslam smirked when he heard the sentence. He's received France's harshest punishment. The 32-year-old will die in prison, some small justice for the victims. It's kind of relief because then the, the, the trial is done now, but it's, it's just the end of one step and we have to continue to, I mean... You this, will never this. forget what happened. You will, no, for you sure. will live with the memories Defin of that no. night. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, it's, for sure. I mean, it's, it's there. So, I mean, the worst thing, and I told that to my brother, is that now they are in our heads. So, and it's exactly that. Seven years after, they're still there. And, uh, yeah, the court did their, did their job perfect. And now it's uh, our own job to continue to recover. The victims, their families and the French nation have waited seven years for justice. Outwardly, Paris is its buzzy, cosmopolitan, normal self once more. But the night of the 13th of November 2015 will forever be etched in the city's history. Alice Bunkle, Sky News in Paris.